Welcome to the Crypto Vibes Podcast, your weekly recap of news of what's happened in the world of crypto and Web3. We aggregate the news throughout the week to provide a condensed version. It's not all the news for the week. And everything we cite during the show and even some of the stuff that didn't make the show is available on our website at CryptoPodcast.xyz. It is week 48 of 2022, and this is episode 38. I'm your host, Neil Alonzo. We hope you've had a good week. It's been an interesting week just after the first portion of the holiday festivities, so we hope that your holiday season is off to a good start. And before we dive into everything, some disclosures. We are not financial advisors, wealth managers, lawyers, brokers, or CPAs. Please do not construe anything that we're talking about as investment advice. Now, our thoughts for this week. We were hoping that the FTX side of things wouldn't dominate everything like it has been the past few weeks, but this week it still dominated. I mean, it had some great opposition, but yeah, it dominated pretty heavily. And we're going to go through those headlines here shortly. But one of the bigger pieces of media that came out that was dominating and fighting for the headlines in this space was Coinbase wallet app update disables NFT functionality at Apple's request. So Apple didn't want NFTs being utilized a certain way on Coinbase. Now this is where it gets real hot and heavy because as we shared before on previous Crypto Vibes podcast, Apple is changing their terms of service as it relates to NFTs and a 30% cut in this particular world is going to have a, a substantial amount of opposition. I'm sure Epic Games is just banging away at the phone saying, hey, let's all get together and try to go after Apple's situation or their stance in this place. This battle has been brewing for a long time, so it's going to be interesting to see how it unfolds. I mean, Elon Musk even had their situation with Apple this week. Although Elon's position on it wasn't necessarily related to NFTs, but the argument is still there, and that is that there's an App Store monopoly. We used to hold a stance that they created this environment, and they're not acting in the best interest of innovation, in our opinion. I mean, it's innovation that allowed them to become the great Apple that they've become. But it seems like it's starting to stifle innovation in a way that we use words like monopolies or in antitrust suits. But there is a little more to it than that, and especially from the spirit of the Waz, he loved open source. This is heavily against that. But again, he wasn't necessarily the one that did to Apple what Jobs did. And then the whole what would Steve Jobs do argument, I don't know. I don't think anybody really knows. It's a different world now. He would have had a point of view, that's for sure. But on to the headlines for this week. And we're going to run through a lot of the headlines that have FTX. Because what? Please remember, there's links to all this in our show notes. First off, the embattled former CEO spoke to ABC News for the first network interview. This is George Stephanopoulos, I believe. Yeah, the fact that he went on that show is just incredible, right? You can watch the link in our video. Attorney General of the Bahamas defends its crypto savvy in the wake of FTX crash. They got a save face too, right? FTX, Alameda O, BlockFi more than $1 billion in court hearing. Okay, another headline. Sam Bankman Free denies knowingly dipping into customers' assets. So there is an argument for that. We we heard a good podcast that was having a debate about this between Kara Swisher and Scott Galloway on the Pivot podcast. And it's interesting to see both of those sides of thought. How do you agree with both and disagree with both at the same time? But yeah, did he know? I think he did. But I also think that he started drinking his own water cooler talk the hype around him he started believing it the reality distortion field if you will works for all of us in our own ways another headline sbf hid republican donations so media wouldn't quote freak the fuck out well yeah donating to both parties but in all fairness who doesn't want to bet on red and black another headline politicians are giving back their donations from disgrace ftx founder well okay <laughs> This, this is those moments when politicians are saving face. That's pretty cool, right? Sam Bankman Freed addresses withdrawals, FTX collapse, and newly released audio interviews. So this is a Coindesk article, so you should definitely give it a listen if you really want. FTX resumes post-bankruptcy payments to employees. Well, thank you. 
Another headline, CFTC chair, crypto, quote, potentially a threat to national security after FTX crash. Okay. SBF roasted for tone deaf New York Times interview. And crypto Twitter did not like it. There's links to threads if you really want to get that cannon fodder. Bankrupt BlockFi suing FTX founder over Robinhood shares promised as collateral per a report. That's interesting, right? There's always a lot of deal-making details that come out when shit goes sideways. BlackRock CEO still in crypto for the tech despite FTX scandal. It's good to know. Binance seizes FTX bankruptcy to expand into Japan. Again. That's the headline on BlockWorks article. CFTC chairman suggests pause to overhaul Senate bill following FTX debacle. The question is, why the pause? I mean, we understand that a pause sometimes is necessary, but what about the bill is going to be different as a result of what happened with FTX? Wasn't this kind of thought of prior to the FTX debacle? Bitcoin Senator Loomis, FTX collapse shows, quote, it's time for Congress to learn about crypto. It's been a long time ago. They should have learned about it a while ago, but this is one of those things that say, hey, maybe we should really learn about this. And that's the headlines for FTX and Sam Bankman-Fried. At least those are some of them. I'm sure there's more, but let's go into some other news. Coinbase wallet to end support for Bitcoin Cash, Ethereum Classic, Ripple's XRP, and Stellar's XLM. So if you have any of those on Coinbase, your Coinbase wallet, yeah, they're going to end support for it. Stripe enables fiat to crypto on-ramp. Now, this is a big deal. We're big fans of these almost non-discretionary services and products that really make up the foundational structure of how we do business, right? So Stripe doing this is a big deal. We believe it's a big deal. Binance releases proof of reserve system. In an effort to be more transparent, which they kind of need to be, and Binance being the behemoth that they are, this is a step forward in earning trust, negotiating trust, if you will. New York wants crypto startups to pay five times per year for bit license. New York, they want to make the cost of living and doing business all match up, right? It's safe to say our crypto mining operations will not be in New York anytime soon, if ever. But I do love New York in the fall. In a headline, and this is an op-ed, Ethereum reverses post-merge censorship trend. Concerns around possible censorship of Ethereum transactions was prevalent in the weeks leading up to and after the merge. But the latest data shows that this upward trend may be reversing. That's in the byline. Uniswap calls its new NFT aggregator a, quote, Google search for trading. Well, we'll see. I mean... I'm a big fan of the aggregators and that business model. There's a lot more happening right now. Uniswap acquired a company in order to build out theirs a little bit quicker. OpenSea also acquired an early entrant to the aggregator. So for those of you YC founders out there, this is potentially becoming a tar pit idea. But I don't believe it's there yet because the most talented people who should be working on aggregators, seasoned veterans that have probably been coding since 2012 in the blockchain space, Probably not the ones who are attracted to this space, which means there's a lot of room for new entrants, new tech people to build in this space and potentially make something quite large. Another crypto blockchain-based podcast, Bankless, is now more than a media company. We're fans of a lot of stuff that they put out, and this is what it says in some of the article. The self-branded digital assets education outlet said Friday it is acquiring a tool designed to hook users up with software that automatically scans for unclaimed airdrops of digital assets. That's pretty cool. And given the influence of Bankless, this seems like a great value add for what they're doing. Be interesting to see how it works and how adoption ends up happening as a direct result of their influence in the space. Polygon API soon to deploy Web3 indexing service. The graph. So Polygon has made news in and out. A lot of what they do has been overshadowed by a lot of the controversy and media grabbing clickbait headlines that we see in the crypto blockchain space, Web3 space. But we have to say what they're working on, we're cautiously optimistic and hopeful that it's going to be positive towards the structure of a lot of things that need to happen in the space. And in the last bit of news for this week on the podcast is Mattel NFT Marketplace. It looks like they fully have dropped one. They put out a press release recently. And Mattel entering the NFT marketplace, it's showing how in real life items 
will be utilized as digital assets and what can happen in the space? I mean, think about it. What if you could drive a Hot Wheels car throughout Fortnite? There's a lot that can be done here. And maybe you drive that Hot Wheels car across to another metaverse within the Apex environment. Again, these are different companies, but there's the potential that something like this could happen. And you could do it all while wearing your, your Jordans or your Air Force Ones that you got on the soon-to-be Nike marketplace of Dot Swoosh, right? Again, that's it for this week. It's not all the news. And again, everything that we cited and didn't share is on CryptoPodcast.xyz. We'd like to thank Good Soup Music for that intro and outro song. This show is produced by Vocal Visual and Wizard Cats, and it comes out every Saturday, excluding holidays. But so far... It looks like we're going to be making it through most of the holidays, but I think we're going to be taking a week off here soon. I am your host, Neil Alonzo, and we are cautiously optimistic and hopefully pessimistic on crypto. Have a great weekend.